We're now ready to take a look at our first selection tool, the Magic Wand tool. Now, as I mentioned, the Magic Wand tool is the selection tool that a lot of beginners use. Anybody who's made selections without knowing what they're doing has probably used the Magic Wand. However, there is one situation in which the Magic Wand is the tool to use. We're going to show you that. I'm going to show you how the tool works. We'll take a look at the options. Now, I'm going to open up a couple images here. I'm going to open up number three and number four. And when those open up, let's jump over to number three. I'm going to double click my hand tool so that fits in the screen. Now, if you have a two-column toolbox, the Magic Wand is located in the right-hand column, second one down, and it's packaged in there with the Quick Selection tool. Now, what the Magic Wand tool does is it selects colors. If I come down here and click on this blue, we select some of the blue portions of the cell phone. Now, if I want to get the entire cell phone, at this point, I'd hold the Shift key down, and I'd keep clicking. Clicking, 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 clicking. Clicking. I, I could be clicking till the cows come home. There's way too many colors in this image here to use the magic wand effectively. So the magic wand is not good for selecting an item when there's lots of different colors. So I'd have to keep clicking on each one of those little areas that are not selected. Sometimes it's hard to tell what's selected and what isn't. But as you can see, this is not the way to work. Now let me show you the options involved here. Of course we have our little shortcut buttons for the add to selection, delete from selection, and keep the intersection of the selections. We already know we don't need any of those. We can use keyboard shortcuts. So just leave this set on new selection. Now when you click on any given color, not only is that color selected, but it seems like some other shades of that color are selected as well. That's what the tolerance controls. If we turn the tolerance down to something like zero, and I'm going to hit Control D to deselect, I pretty much only get that one specific color that I click on. If I were to crank this thing up to 50, you can see I get more shades of blue. I'm going to hold that Shift key down to add to the selection. Do Control D. Now, if I were to turn this up to the maximum of 255, that's every color there is. So no matter what color you click on, you get just about every other color as well. With two clicks there, I have the entire image selected. And I'm not talking about the cell phone. I'm literally talking about the actual image. Now, your selection outline looks like marching ants. So wherever you see marching ants, that's what you have selected. If you ever see the marching ants along the outside border of your image, you know you have the entire image selected, not just the cell phone. So normally you're going to turn that tolerance down to something like, you know, the default was somewhere around in the 30s. And that should work in most cases. Now you can also deselect by just clicking here in the gray area. So I have something selected, just come over here and click in one of the gray areas outside the image to deselect as well here. You can't click somewhere else on the image like we could with the patch tool. Because wherever you click, you keep getting that color. So you can vary the tolerance based on the situation. The anti-alias, just leave this on, it actually smooths out the lines of the selections. You might click and initially it looks like it's going to be a jagged selection and then suddenly it actually smooths out. So just leave that on. I don't know why you would ever want it off. The other important option up here is contiguous or non-contiguous, which would be turning this off. With contiguous on, when you use the magic wand to click and select a color, it'll also select any other pixels of that same color as long as they are connected to each other. For example, if I click on this shade of orange, it's going to select any other pixels of that same shade of orange as long as they are connected to each other. Notice that it did not select the orange in this antenna, even though the colors appear to be about the same. That's because there's no trail of orange pixels from one to the other. In between the two are other colors. They're isolated from each other. If I were to deselect now and come up here and turn contiguous off, that means get orange anywhere. Notice it jumps anywhere in the image to get that shade of orange based on the tolerance. It even jumped down here in the little face and got some of those pixels. If I were to turn the tolerance up, you can see we get more shades of orange. 
but it's going to jump anywhere in that image to get orange. With contiguous on, you see it only gets orange as long as the pixels touch each other. Most of the time, I'm working with contiguous on. I'm trying to select something. I'm trying to select, say, the frame or the antenna. I'm not trying to select orange in general throughout an image. We also have a sample all layers option. We're familiar with this by now. If we turn this on, regardless of what layer we're on, when we click, we're going to get that color. We know with this off, when we click, we're only gonna get colors that happen to be on the layer that we're working on. In this case here, it doesn't really matter what we set it to because we only have one layer. There's also a refine edges. Now we're gonna go over this refine edges in the level two class. This is what you need to use when you're trying to select things with flying hair or fur, or as we mentioned, other things without distinct hard edges. There's no real reason that we need it right now when we're selecting something such as a cell phone with a distinct outline and distinct edges. So in the level one course, we're not going to be working with the refine edges. Every selection tool has a refine edges option. The lasso tool, here we see refine edges. Come over here to the rectangle marquee tool, we have refine edges up here as well. So we now see what the magic wand tool is not good for. If we're trying to select a cell phone, there's just too many colors in that cell phone to use the magic wand effectively. And by the way, you can tell when you have the cell phone selected, you'll see the marching ant selection outline on the outer edge of the cell phone only. There'll be no selection outlines within the inner area of the cell phone, nor anywhere else in the image. So if you're trying to select something with lots of colors, forget the magic wand. However, I'm going to tell you that the magic wand is the tool for this image. Because here's what you can do. We're on a white background. That's a solid color. Well, why don't I select the white background? That gets everything but the cell phone. And then just select the inverse of that. You can do that by right-clicking you'll see select inverse or come up to the select menu and you'll see select inverse right here. When I do that, we now have the cell phone. Now we're going to look at making compositions in more detail in lesson number 12, but for right now, for those of you who aren't quite clear as to why we're making a selection to begin with, let me show you. Once you've made your selection, you come up here, grab your black arrow tool, your move tool, click and drag it, drag it up to the tab of the other image, let go, and there's your cell phone. We're able to drag the cell phone over into this other picture, minus the white background. Now that is not the best selection possible. In lesson 12, I'm going to give you some helpful hints to make your selections even more believable than this. Delete that layer right there. Jump back over here to the magic wand. So this is a great tool for certain images. If you use a lot of stock photography, a lot of times if they have an object, they photographed it on a white background, it's great for that. You just select the white background or whatever solid color background it is, do the inverse. Now, whenever you're thinking about selections, and I always tell my students this, if the word selection is in your question that you're asking yourself, how do I make a selection? How do I inverse a selection? If the word selection is anywhere in that question that you ask yourself, go up to the select menu. Chances are that's where you're going to find the answer. Now I'm gonna jump over to this picture right here. Some of my college buddies from back in the mid 1980s. And I always ask students, well, what if I wanna select the guys and the mountains? Can you use the magic wand tool? And most people say, no. You hold the shift key down, you click, you click, tolerance is up too high. Pull that down, I'll deselect, click, 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 click. I'm shift clicking, I should say. And you can see that's simply not going to work. Now students understood that I wouldn't be able to select the guys in the mountain and get away with it because there's far too many colors. Yet they still answer no because they look at the sky and they say that's not a solid color either so it's just not going to work. Well it doesn't have to be quite a solid color. We just want a very limited number of colors. Well let's see what happens if I select the sky. One click, one shift click, two shift clicks. Missed a little bit of his hat. In a few mini lessons from now, here in lesson 11, we'll show you how to refine those selections if you happen to have missed something. I can just right click, select the inverse, and now I have the guy selected and not the sky for the most part. Of course, with the flying hair right here, you might have to use the refine edges tool. 
but that gets you started. I just wanted to point out that a background doesn't have to be a solid color. It just has to have a minimal number of colors for the magic wand to work effectively. There's a lot of whites in the sky and some grays, and that's about it. So selecting the sky is fairly useful. So remember, you're either selecting what you want or what you don't want. And if one of those is a solid color or very close to it or minimum number of colors, then the magic wand is going to work. You may have to adjust the tolerance, and in most cases, you're going to want contiguous on when you're actually trying to select objects. With contiguous off, you can see as soon as I click white of the sky, it gets white anywhere in the image. Now it's getting gray anywhere. You got gray in the shirt, etc., so that's not going to work. So that wraps up our discussion on the magic wand tool. In the next lesson, we're going to take a look at my favorite selection tool now, the quick selection tool. So we'll see you there.